Well, good afternoon. This is our opening video for In His Image Ministries. My name is Dean Boerter, and I will be setting out the initial parameters of this video. Um, In His Image is a ministry that is looking to uh, build discipleship in the body of Christ, uh, to coach individuals in discipleship, in the basic tenets of the faith, um, and through more advanced, intermediate and advanced teaching on subjects relevant to the Christian life and how to live it in his image. The fundamental scriptures that, that form the basis of the ministry are Genesis 126, 127, and 128, with Romans 8:29 and Romans 12, 2, and 1 Corinthians um, 3, verse 18. These form the foundation of the principles of discipleship is about the image of Christ Jesus. Today I want to look at um, Ephesians 4, uh, verses 12 and 13, which are God's eternal purpose of why he is making disciples, what his plans and purposes were, and what they are in the age after Jesus Christ came and modelled the life of God living inside the human body. In other words, in our likeness and in our image, he came and modelled out that symbiotic relationship between God and man that he intended to have in Adam and in Adam's subsequent generations. And we know that that didn't quite work out because of the disobedience of Adam and his wife Eve. So I'm just going to quickly read the scripture. Uh, it says this, with a view to the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until we all come into the unity of faith and of the full knowledge of the Son of God to be a full grown man to the measure and stature of the fullness of God. So God's intent, the pinnacle of his intent, is the saints, the body of, of Christ, um, and as Jesus called it, his ecclesia, which does not refer to a congregation or to an assembly of believers, but to the principal point that they are the Sanhedrin of God, the governing council of God. The fact that we uh, organize ourselves into fellowships and congregations and assemblies, that is, um, that is not the ecclesia. The ecclesia are the individuals that make up those fellowships. And it's wonderful, of course, to fellowship together and fellowship with God and commune with each other. But the principal purpose of God, uh, is reason for the ecclesia, is to ensure that each individual saint comes into the perfection, comes into the image and stature of Christ Jesus. And so he has designed processes for that. And so Romans 8.29 talks about God's predetermined plan. He had a predetermined plan that he would design mankind in the image of Christ Jesus. In the image of God, he made them. And then he transforms us into his image and likeness. And as I indicated, uh, Romans 12, 2, talk about that. Romans 8, 29, I've mentioned it. And uh, one, uh, 2 Corinthians, sorry, 2 Corinthians 3, 18. So there's a process involved in our thinking. There's a process involved in changing our thought life so that it's not aimed at the world, 
not aimed at getting by, as we always did, living by the impulses of our own heart and by the motivations that were there, and motivations that were evil and selfish. And so there has to come a renewing of our minds, uh, the replacement of that old thinking with the new thinking of a new creature, a new creation in Christ Jesus that begins to think and set our thoughts in the heavenly realms and think like a Christ man and not like an earth man that's worldly and carnal. So there's a process in God that's aimed at our thinking. And that process involves the changing of the seed. The new seed of God is not corruptible. The seed of God is incorruptible. Uh, it's not mortal. It's immortal. It's not dying. It's a resurrected, ascended life. And those think, that thinking, that seed, is the Word of God. The same Word of God that incarnated in flesh and took our likeness is now transforming us into His likeness, changing the way we think, changing the way we see ourselves, changing the way that we act, cleaning the inner man so that the outer man changes and the outer life is changed. It's the reverse of religion. It's not imposing behavioral changes on us. It's becoming Christ from the inside out. The thought process has changed that we think like a heavenly man and not an earthly man. And to help us, God gives us his Holy Spirit. Uh, Philippians 2.13 tells us that God is at work in us, causing us to take on his desires and then to do them. In other words, the Holy Spirit is at work transforming the word of God and the seed, causing it to grow and renew our minds so that our thinking changes and our behavior changes. The second uh, level of assistance that God gave us was those gifts that are mentioned in Ephesians 4 uh, verse 11, uh, sometimes referred to as apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, whether they're four or five doesn't really matter, but those gifts were primarily aimed to assist the saints to do the work of the ministry. And to do the work of the ministry, we must become like him. In Christ, the hope of glory in us must begin to manifest more and more and more as we take on his likeness in the same way he took on our likeness. And he took the punishment that was due to us and gave us his life so that we could be made into his image and walk in the earth just as our Savior Jesus did. So Father, we thank you that every day and in every way we are being made new. Every day, you are transforming us by your incorruptible seed being planted in us that is able to save us to the utmost. And every day, God, we are looking more and more like the image you intended for us, the image that you blessed, the image that you said would be fruitful, would multiply, would fill the earth, subdue it and dominate it. And so, Father, I thank you that everyone who is understanding that in this day and in this age, your focus is on your eternal purpose to raise up the saints, to do the work of the ministry, to get the job done so that Jesus Christ can rule over all of his enemies, all of his enemies, including death the last enemy to be put down, so that our glorious King can sit upon his glorious throne and rule over this earth. Just as Psalm 110 says, just as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, and as Peter says when he is addressing the people after the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, that Jesus must rule. And so 
I thank you, God, that everyone listening is becoming a fully-fledged, complete and mature man through the teaching of the motivation gifts that you gave and through the work of your Holy Spirit in us. Blessed be your name. Amen.